The author Nital Parekh said, we grow when we allow changes to change us. See, I wake up every morning and meditate for an hour before beginning my day. That hour-long meditation grounds me and makes me much more effective in my work throughout the day. I consider my work as that of a firefighter. The earth is on fire, literally so in places like California. Even the ultra-conservative UNIPCC has said that if we continue with business as usual, then within the next 11 years, by 2030, we would have triggered catastrophic climate change. The World Wildlife Fund's Living Planet reports show that if we continue with business as usual, then within the next seven years, virtually all wild animals will be dead. And Dr. Kim Williams, the former president of the American College of Cardiology, said that if we continue with business as usual, then the American healthcare system, which operates on the disease maintenance model instead of a disease prevention model, will be bankrupt by 2026. So after 12 years of intensive study, I have come to the conclusion that only compassion can quench the Earth's fire. The compassion will automatically reduce our demands on Earth and make us work on alleviating the suffering of other beings in our daily lives. To become compassionate is to come home to who we really are. Just nothing to be afraid of. Indeed, an incredibly joyful transformation awaits us if we find the courage to make that journey home collectively. The truth is sustainable. Lies are not. Therefore, in order to become sustainable, we must face up to all the lies that we've been telling ourselves. Our societal and personal denials. The most consequential of all such denials is not climate denial, as the mainstream media would have us believe, but it is compassion denial. Compassion denial is the denial of the suffering of other beings and the suppression of our natural urge to alleviate that suffering. This is the denial of our own true selves, which is pure compassion. Compassion for all life is at the core of all religious teachings because it is infinitely sustainable. Conversely, deliberate institutionalized cruelty to any part of life is not sustainable. The fact that we are leading unsustainable lives implies that such deliberate institutionalized cruelty is fueling our current lifestyles. To become sustainable, we need to engineer a truly compassionate civilization in which such institutionalized cruelty is absent. Furthermore, we have to engineer and adopt this compassionate civilization within the next seven years or face dire consequences. Just as I begin each day with an hour of meditation, I begin each year with a week of rest and reflection, resolving to grow more into my true compassionate self during the course of this year. I started doing this at the beginning of 2018, thanks to Dr. Shelley Ostroff, who introduced me to her brilliant Seven Days of Rest and Reflection initiative. I truly believe that this act made me much more effective during the year. Such effectiveness is especially needed today because over the next seven years, we as a species are being called to mature quickly from our adolescent to adult selves and to go from a caterpillar to a butterfly phase and create a vegan world by 2026. The start of a new year is the perfect time to reflect on the limits we place on our compassion and to widen our circle of compassion to include all lives. For 2019, Dr. Ostroff asks us to take stock of our relationship with the earth, water, fire, air, climate, biodiversity, and the web of life, respectively, during the seven days of rest, and to resolve to do something better in the coming year. On January 1st, let us reflect on our relationship with the earth, specifically the critters in the soil, and resolve to nurture them with love and respect. 
Without their tireless work, we would not have food to eat. Let us reflect on our relationship with the farmed animals who are exploited mercilessly and slaughtered. Let us reflect on our relationship with the wild animals who are driven away from their forest homes so that we can have more meat and dairy. Let us resolve to go vegan and end these cruel practices in 2019. On January 2nd, let us reflect on our relationship with water, specifically the algae, the plankton, frogs, fishes, and whales in streams, rivers, and lakes in the ocean. Let us resolve to go vegan and put an end to their institutionalized killing. Let us re resolve to clean up the plastic and the chemical pollution of our water and the aquatic homes of these incredible creatures. On January 3rd, let us reflect on our relationship with fire, which is energy. Specifically, let's reflect on our relationship with our fellow human beings and our pets, whom we embrace to give and receive warmth. Let us seek and bestow forgiveness to heal our relationships with them. Let us also resolve to be truly mindful of the energy we use during the course of the year. On January 4th, let us reflect on our relationship with air, specifically the insects and birds who pollinate the flowers and spread seeds far and wide. Let us resolve to stop using insecticides which kill the insects, which kill the birds who feed on those insects. Let us reflect on the chickens, the ducks, the turkeys who live short, miserable lives in our factory farms before meeting the butcher's knife. Let us resolve to go vegan and end this cruel practice. On January 5th, let us reflect on our relationship with the Earth's climate and the immense responsibility we shoulder as the thermostat species of the planet. As any climate scientist can tell you, there are only three things we can do which don't have negative consequences for the Earth's climate. First is to go vegan. Second is to rewild the land that is freed up when we all go vegan. And the third is to burn less fossil fuels. Let's resolve to take these three steps without any further delay in 2019. On January 6th, let us reflect on our relationship with the incredible biodiversity of the planet and how it is being devastated by our actions. The number of species that have been lost, gone extinct already, will require a few million years to reappear in other forms to fill the ecological niches they left behind. It's well past time for us to halt the extinction of species and to nurture the species that still remain. And the best way to do that is to go vegan. Finally, on January 7th, let us reflect on our relationship with the web of life on which we depend entirely for our own lives. The web supplies us with all that is nourishing, food, water, oxygen, and makes possible the lives of all the other species we are co-dependent on. And for that, we should be truly grateful. Thank you very much.